Hi everybody. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How is everybody going? Happy pre-Friday. <laughs> I promised I would do a part two of orgasms. So here we are. <laughs> I have to admit that I feel a little bit warm, I feel a little bit not ready, but that's all right, we'll handle it, right? <laughs> Hi, Mish. <laughs> nice to see you. Hi, Rona. Nice to see you. <laughs> How is everybody shaping up for the weekend? I hope everyone is still taking good care considering our climate, our COVID-19 climate. Mm. Hi Sandy, nice to see you. So we wanted to continue our conversation on orgasms. I'm Sherilyn Marshall, otherwise known as Red Wine. My show is called Red Wine Talking because I talk. <laughs> so hi Red Fox, <laughs> nice to see you here. I know we wanted to do a part two on orgasm, so I wanted to follow up from where we left off. We were talking about whether or not orgasms are truly elusive. Um, we were talking about what is the best way to have them. Um, we talked about the G-spot. We can continue talking about that. We talked about oral sex. We talked about the clitoris. We talked about having orgasms just from foreplay. And I remember um, one of my viewers saying that she gets orgasms just from dancing. And I thought that was really cool. I, I never had an orgasm from dancing, but I know we do in the islands, we do a lot of grinding and winding up on each other when we're dancing. So I could so see how that is possible. I just wasn't sure if I would be making a lot of noises on the dance floor while I'm having that orgasm because my orgasms can be pretty noisy and I'm sure a lot of you have orgasms that could be noisy <laughs> so I guess when the music is playing and it's playing really loudly nobody can hear you if you're moaning and groaning and calling out God's name in vain like how I do sometimes when I'm having orgasms not only um, am I calling out God's name in vain but I was wondering if anybody else feel like they're having like a heart attack like their heart is racing so fast when they're having that orgasm like there are times when I've told my husband, oh my God, call 911. I feel like if my heart is going to jump out of my chest, you know, when I'm having my orgasms because they're so intense. So I wanted to also look, hi Colin Butts, hi Denise, hi Yolanda, hi Chinlu, looking for Miranda. Hi Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm a noise maker, Red Fox. I'm so a red. I'm so a noise maker. I can't help it. I don't even know that I'm doing it because I'm just reacting to to the feeling. I'm just deep into the feeling that I'm having. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes you can't breathe either, Sandy. I get it. Sometimes, yeah, you feel like you can't breathe. So call nine one one. I may need to get some help here. <laughs> So I was I wanted to, to kind of dip into the fact that you know for the people who are not having orgasms as easily, um, I wanted to find out if there's something else. Yes, better calling God's name than anyone else. I agree, Chinlo. I totally agree. That would be a little bit troublesome. <laughs> Which I don't think I'll have a problem because usually I'm having good sex with somebody that I'm already into. So if it's anybody's name other than God's name, I would be calling that person's name that I'm deeply into. <laughs> or maybe he's deeply into me. <laughs> Yolanda, listening to the show, 
I realize other women experience what I do. What is that, Yolanda? You mean the same things, right? Sometimes we feel like we want to call 911. Sometimes we are so deep in it. So, yeah, and that's what I like. I like that when we talk, we can relate to one another and we can realize that we're not alone in all of our sexual endeavors. <laughs> so, I wanted to also say that there are times when we try to figure out, well, why is it that that orgasm is so elusive? What am I missing? What is it that I think I should be doing? And like I said before, you should definitely let everything go and just stay in the moment, you know, just experience what you're actually going through at the time and how how scrumptious it actually is. Mm -hmm. So Miranda is saying, I can get off when you choke me right when I am ready. I will come over and over. I don't really call out. I just want confirmation that Romeo is mine and I need him to say it's mine. That's a big turn on to I agree. A little bit of talk. I'm glad you said that because sometimes talk helps you through it, you know. Sometimes if your partner is talking to you and saying, your mind, this feels so good. You feel so good. I love being in here. I love that. And I think that helps. That helps to encourage you into actually getting to that, to that orgasm that you, that you really want to have. So my little brother Sherlyn said, she told me call her name because it's not God pleasuring or riding me. And I get that, I get that, call your name. You want us to call your name. I get that the guys might want us to do that. Just like how we might want you to call our name as well. <laughs> yes, Yolanda feels like you're getting a heart attack. Yes, when the orgasm is deep, it really does. I'm glad I'm not the only one that feels that. Sandy Johnson, you like the talk. You know, I do like the talk, but I don't really, I don't really get too deep into it. Maybe like a little statement here and there, a little encouragement here and there, the sex talk. I can see how that might totally help. And I remember doing the show on eye contact during sex. I do like that eye contact as well. If you're looking me right in the eyes when I'm about to have my orgasm, that's that's really deep, totally deep. Red Fox, surprisingly, my erogenous zone can be my ears and toes. I don't think that's a big surprise at all. My ears, my toes are also very sensitive. I think my entire body is very sensitive, but for some certain parts of their bodies are more sensitive than others. So I see why the ears and toes might be more sensitive for you, Red Fox. My neck, my neck is also very sensitive. Very, very sensitive. Kissing, kissing while I'm about to have that orgasm is also, it also works really well. Also works really well. I wanted to find out as well because we talked about on the show at some point in time about bringing a third person into the bedroom. So I wondered if people that are having problems having orgasm, if maybe a third person will help for a woman, maybe, maybe another man and for a man, maybe another woman. I know in the past, my husband has asked me if I would do a threesome. And I remember saying in the past, never. Threesomes, I could see why some people enjoy it and why it might be an extra something to do in, in the bed that would get you aroused and get those juices flowing. But for me, um, I don't think that a third person will do it. First of all, I don't need anything else to have an orgasm, but for some people, I'm wondering, will a third person do it? Will, will a threesome do it for you to actually have that elusive orgasm? Yes, Miranda, I know you would agree with my brother. Tell me, yes, yes, without a doubt. <laughs> Tell me how sweet Juliet is and be very specific 
in how Romeo feels while he's in there. Another biggie for you. I can get that. I can totally get that. You're, you're telling me how you feel while you're in my Juliet. I could see why that would be a big turn on to help me get to that point. Your nipples and your neck are very sensitive. Chilio, I'm surprised because I was wondering if men have that sensitivity in their nipples. I've always been wondering that because I know we have that sensitivity. I was just wondering if men have that sensitivity. And I asked my hubby and you know he said yes but not that much not as sensitive as i am with my nipples so good to know that you do have that sensitivity in your nipples miranda said oh yes three songs and chindu said been there done that two songs are overrated really chindu oh my goodness Miranda, threes, let's go back to you, all threes, you said, like six exclamation marks, yes. So when you do the threes, Miranda, are you thinking another guy or are you thinking another girl or don't you care? You don't care if it's another guy or a girl? What about five? What about five? I think that's turning into an orgy and it might work for some of you, but five? I think five sounds like a lot. Chinlu says that he's been there, done that. Threesomes are overrated. And I could see that. I could totally see that. I don't think I would know exactly who to concentrate on and when. And I think that I would have a little problem if my, my guy at that time is paying too much attention to that other person, if it's a girl or a guy, you never know. I would think maybe my guy is paying too much attention to that other person, which will be a turn off for me. I won't be able to get into it if I realize that he's paying too much attention to that third person. I won't be able to at all. It will kill my vibe. I truly believe that will kill my vibe. There was one person, just to give you a little quick story, because I always said no threesomes, I'm not attracted to women, and I never wanted another man in the bedroom either. But there was one time when I was attracted to one woman, I didn't know her at all, she was a dentist, and I thought she was pretty hot. But I look at women and I see women that are pretty hot and I can acknowledge that. But I kind of saw myself in a threesome with her for some reason. That was many years ago. I have no idea where she is now. She was around my age and I thought to myself, that was the first woman I ever thought, well, maybe I'll do a threesome with her. First and only woman that I ever thought that about. <laughs> hey, Anjali, Trinidad in the house. Nice to see you. <laughs> I'm glad you joined us. Sandy Johnson, five songs like a pet. I agree, it sounds like a whole big party. Like, I don't know if I'm ready for all of that. <laughs> Gary Tab, yes we do, but it also depends on the emotional flow of making love. Exactly, Gary, it really does, it really does. I could see why you might agree to that because it does depend, a lot of it depends, a lot of this, a lot of this sexual talk and interactions. It depends on who we're actually having sex with, right? Miranda says I did two girls, two guys, and it was okay, but honestly a bit disappointing. Not 100% sexy at all. I can see that. Maybe it depends on the people like we were just saying, like Gary was just saying. It depends on who you're with. It depends on the person. It depends on the connection. So that threesome or fivesome <laughs> to to be actually working for you and your partner, right? Threesomes could add some spice, Angelique says. Just be the one in charge. Well said, Angelique. If I were to do a threesome, like I said, I would be worried about him showing too much attention to that other person. And yes, I would have to be in charge so that it doesn't go out of whack, you know, so that I don't have to worry about who's showing more attention to whom. And I can still 
stay in the moment and truly enjoy it. So I get that. I get that. I'm going to take note of that for if and when I were to venture into a threesome. I would definitely have to be the one in control. <laughs> so, um, I'm thinking I'm going to have to continue this conversation on threesomes at some point in time. So, tell me what you guys think about the threesomes. And if you think the threesomes, that third person isn't really enough. And if you need to add a fourth and a fifth, like how Miranda said. Tell me about it. Tell me what you guys think. I'd like to know. Angelic Patience said, my threesome was great. I got all the attention. That's how mine will be great if, if I get all the attention. I could be very jealous when it comes to my significant other. So I would want to make sure that the attention stays on me. And then I also worry about whether or not that person might want to be with this third person every time we have our sexual interaction. So I do worry about that. Chin Lu, what about light bondage and blindfolds? Hmm, I am coming to that. Trust me, that is going to be another show because I love bondage and I love blindfolds. I always tell my husband one of my fantasies is to be tied up and basically to the bed and legs, legs apart arms apart and you do whatever you want to be want to do to me you do it you just do it i think that's a huge turn on i don't i don't know how i'll handle the blindfolds but i'm definitely willing to try that i think that's an extra step that i would be very much willing to go <laughs> david craig nice to see you honestly you don't need more than one person to light up the house once you know what you're doing i'm like you are right you are right david i don't think it's a necessity i think for some people it might be but it's definitely not a necessity for me and like you said once you know what you're doing we should be more than okay dj jovi jove your version of a threesome is you using your hands, your mouth, and your manhood and a mask. I like it. I like it. Keep it spicy. Be innovative. How else can I please you? Hi, Shauna Whittingham. Nice of you to join. Hi, Sandy. Yes, blindfolds are sexy. Gary Tab, being in charge and controlling the action can be promising. But you have to be mindful of the other persons being left out. Their needs are very important. I agree 100%. Guys, uh, all this talk is getting me hot and bothered. Let's not forget I'm not on here for very long and the time is about up. So we're going to have to continue with either part three of orgasms or moving on to what else that kind of gets us going, gets our juices flowing in the bedroom. So let's figure it out for my next live. Hopefully it will be next Thursday. Maybe I'll surprise you guys with another day during the week. But thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for vibing with me. Miranda said, I did handcuffs. And I felt I was going crazy. That was it for you. You felt out of control. I do worry about that as much as it's a fantasy for me. I do worry about that. Guys, I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm sorry. Ciao for now. <laughs> Take care. I think control is important. And until my next life, please take good care. Please and have a lovely weekend. Enjoy it with your loved ones. Until we meet again, love to all of you. Hugs and kisses and smooches. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Yes, Miranda. Yes, yes, yes. Smooches. Goodbye, Shauna. Take good care. Bye.